So in line with ethical relativism, we will look into an essay written by an American anthropologist which is in support of such ethical view. The title of the essay is A Defense of Ethical Relativism, written by the American anthropologist Ruth Benedict. As we have explained, ethical relativism claims that moral values are contingent to either the individual or a culture. In metaethics, this uh, theory is generally opposed to the other major theory called ethical objectivism, which claims that moral values have an objective and universal status. So in ethical objectivism, the idea is that um, in whatever circumstances, there are moral truths or moral principles that apply objectively. Like for example, the act of killing. In ethical objectivism, it can be argued, it could be argued that killing is objectively, morally wrong. While in ethical relativism, it can be argued that in some cultures and in, or in some contexts, the act of killing could be morally justifiable. So the author, Ruth Benedict, was an American anthropologist whose theories had a profound influence on cultural anthropology especially in the area of culture and personality. So, um, at the start of the essay, Benedict questions our conclusions regarding our customary modern categories of normality and abnormality. She says, and I quote, In how far are such categories culturally determined? Or in how far can we with assurance regard them as absolute? In how far can we regard inability to function socially as diagnostic of abnormality? Or in how far is it necessary to regard this as a function of the culture? End of quote. So Benedict here is basically questioning our um, notions or, or categories of normality and abnormality in modern society. And as um, we shall see later, these categories of normality and of normality are basically uh, variants of the concepts of good and bad. In other words, normality and abnormality are variants of the moral values of good and bad or right and wrong. So. Benedict presents examples of cultural practices or cultural phenomena which are regarded differently in various cultures. So these cultural practices um, are considered normal in specific cultures, but they may be also deemed abnormal in other cultures. These cultural phenomena are the following. Trans and cataleptic phenomena, homosexuality, paranoid behavior, and the act of head hunting after a death as a form of grief. The first of these is trans and cataleptic phenomena, which can be seen in certain religious practices. For example, in Hinduism, a devotee during festivals would perform rituals that would lead him to a trans state, that is, a psychological state in which the individual or the devotee is transported to a totally different kind of psychological uh, state. The individual is still in the state of wakefulness but is no longer aware of himself and is no longer responsive to his external surroundings. A similar phenomenon is seen in ecstatic experiences which is considered a mark of sainthood in Roman Catholic tradition. So in these religious cultures, these phenomena are considered signs of the divine and therefore they are greatly or highly esteemed. While for other cultures, this may be considered as weird or unusual or in other words, abnormal. Next is homosexuality. 
So in traditional modern Western societies, homosexuality is often um, frowned upon. Actually, uh, there are specific um, cultures that of the past which uh, consider certain homosexual practices as um, noble. For example, the practice of pederasty in ancient Greece. Pederasty is the practice in which adult men engage in romantic or sexual relationships with young boys. And in ancient Greek civilization, this is commonly, normally practiced. And in fact, in Plato's Republic, there is an argument there which considers these homosexual practices as an unnecessary ingredient for the good life. And we know that the search for the meaning of the good life and happiness is what um, drived the first moral philosophers for, uh, for the study of ethics. Another is the institution of the Burdash of the American Indian tribes. So the Burdash, as the French would call them, they are men who, after the age of puberty, take up the dress and occupations of women in their societal tribes. So these um, Burdash, they are also called men, women, they are not ridiculed in their society for wearing the dress of women. In fact, they are leaders of women's affairs. They are good social organizers. They are highly respected in their culture. That is the Budash. So in these cultures, these homosexual practices are greatly um, esteemed. They are placed in their societies. But for some cultures, they would deem homosexuals as having certain problems. Next is paranoid behavior, which is typical of uh, the people of the island of Dobu in Papua New Guinea, which is in Melanesia. So these people in the island of Dobu, they are so obsessed with black magic that they think anyone can possibly conjure it and pose a threat to their well-being. As a consequence, these people normally fear and distrust others. So these people would look at others as a possible conjurer of black ma magic and therefore they could possibly, possibly harm them. They look at the good garden crop of the neighbor as, as a declaration of a theft that neighbors have been using it black magic on others um, gardens to induce good harvest on their own gardens and if they are given a gift or uh, kind of a present they would reply by saying and if you poison me how shall I repay you so these people um, normally have this kind of paranoid behavior now, if one of them would be transported to a society in which um, being open and welcoming to others is the norm, then that person would be totally disoriented. Because in their society, this is the norm, being paranoid. Lastly, head hunting after a death. Now, um, the people of the Kwakiutl tribe of the northwestern coast of America, as a sign of their grief, they do not mourn for their dead, they do not weep for their dead. Instead, when someone dies, their chieftain orders a war party to kill other people by beheading them. This is not even a sign of um, taking vengeance for their dead, but it is just a sign of um, trying to overcome the insult or the injury that death has caused upon them. So if one of them cannot execute this, one of the warriors whom the chieftain orders, if he could not execute this, then he would be considered um, uh, an, a deviant in their society. 
but if they are able to execute it then it is considered as a sign of in fact uh, greatness so that is the people of the Kwakiuto tribe and that is one of their cultural practices so what does what do these tell us these illustrations which it has been possible to indicate only in the briefest manner force upon us the fact that normality is culturally defined writes benedict further she writes we recognize that morality differs in every society and is a convenient term for socially approved habits mankind has always preferred to say it is morally good rather than it is habitual and the fact of this preference is matter enough for a critical science of ethics the concept of the normal is properly a variant of the concept of the good it is that which a society has approved a normal action is one which falls well within the limits of expected behavior for a particular society its variability among different peoples is essentially a function of the variability of the behavior patterns that different societies have created for themselves and can never be wholly divorced from a consideration of culturally institutionalized types of behavior end of quote so benedict is basically arguing here that what is normal is basically what a particular society approves and the normal is properly a variant of the concept of the good or the right so um, and the normal is totally defined by culture so there is a no universal standard which defines the normal the normal is defined by a specific culture 